Midas Mulligan. Who's asking? Someone who knows what it's like to work for himself and not let others feed off the profits of his energy. It's funny. Exactly what I've been thinking. We're like you and I. Who are you? Richard McNamara? I'm McNamara. Are you here from Taggart Transcontinental? No, I'm not. What are you selling, pal? Nothing. I'm simply offering a society that cultivates individual achievement. I know where such a place exists. Wyatt? Yes. Could I have a moment of your time? At this hour? Who the hell are you? My name is familiar to you. Who the hell are you? My name is John Galt. I live in a place we call Atlantis. And I think you'd fit in there. It's a place where heroes live, and where those who want to be heroes live. The government we have there respects each of us as individuals and as producers. Actually, beyond a few courthouses, there's not much of a government at all. Bottom line, Mr. Wyatt. If you're weary of a government that refuses to limit its power over you, and if you're ready at this moment to claim the moral right to your own life, then we should leave. And I'll take you there. I'll take you to Atlantis. Dagny, we are on strike. What happened to Midas? What happened to Doc? It happened to each of us. No man belongs to another, Dagny. But there are those in power who would have you think otherwise. We honor charity and benevolence, but it must be provided on the giver's terms, voluntarily and not by force. The powerful try to make us feel guilty for our success. And we are guilty. Guilty for sacrificing ourselves and for working under their terms. So we had to withdraw to go on strike. But what about what you left behind? We left nothing behind, Dagny. What? We took with us the only real thing of value. Dagny, this is a strike of our minds. So what are you demanding? Nothing. And we're not trying to impose our values on the world that we left behind. They're free to continue to believe as they want, whatever they want. But they're going to have to do it without our help. In a lot of ways, this valley represents what your great-grandfather, Nat, saw in our country. Unbridled opportunity where innovation is rewarded. You see, he built the Taggart Bridge over the Mississippi and connected an entire nation by rail. When the courts tried to stop him, he fought, and he prevailed. That bridge is still standing today. True, true, but as the country prospered, the people gave the government more and more power. Those in charge saw successful businessmen as a threat to their control. So they simply took what was created in the name of the public good. So you convinced the others to strike? Each one was invited here. You, you're the first person to come to this valley by accident. If you choose to stay, You'll have to join us in what we are trying to accomplish. But you have an important decision to make. But I love the railroad my great-grandfather built. Good night. Was it as difficult for all the others? The first night was. 
Is this the room where they arrived? I never intended you to occupy this room. Good night. For years you've asked, who is John Galt? You've asked that question in despair and resignation as factories closed, goods became scarce, jobs disappeared. Your lives are becoming more difficult as the life force of your world is draining away. You have asked that question without expecting an answer. I'm here to answer it. This is John Galt speaking. Mr. Thompson won't tell you the truth about the crisis in your world. I will. Have you noticed that as everything around you seems to decline, one thing still grows? It is the power of your rulers. None of their plans and directives have solved your problems or made your life better. The only result has been their increased control over you at the cost of your freedom. I made it my mission to help these heroes say no. All evil needs to win is the consent of good people. They have joined me to freely produce, trade, cooperate, and compete in a place where the rights of all are protected. To everyone within the range of my voice, you now have a choice to make. If you decide to support the notion of sacrifice enforced by the state, your game is up. Your world is in a downward spiral, and you will ride it down to destruction. But if you share the values of our strike, if you believe that your life is a sacred possession for you to make the most of, if you want to live by the judgment of your own mind, not edicts from the state, then follow our lead. Do not support your own oppressors. Stop letting the system exploit you. Form your own communities on the frontiers of your crumbling world. Your rulers hold you by your endurance to carry the burdens they impose, by your generosity when you hear cries of despair, and above all, by your innocence which cannot grasp the depths of their evil. The world you are living in is the world they wanted. Leave them to it. Those who have left you are eager to build a better world, a world of freedom and opportunity, a world based on mutual respect. In that world, you will rise in the morning with the spirit you knew in childhood, the spirit of eagerness and adventure, and the confidence that the world is what it is and is there for you to discover. In that world, you will not receive alms nor pity, but honor, respect, and justice. Don't let the fire go out spark by irreplaceable spark in confusion and despair. Be sure of your path. The world you desire can be won. It exists. It is real. It is possible. It is yours. In the name of the best within you, do not sacrifice your sense of life to an enemy that would claim your precious mind. Do not let your fire go out spark by irreplaceable spark. Do not let the hero in your soul perish in lonely frustration for the life you deserve but have never been able to reach. The world you desire can be won. It exists. It is real. It is possible. It is yours. This is John Gall speaking.